we've seen in recent videos or in previous videos that I've um, recorded that the amount of blood that leaves the heart is dependent on the amount of blood that returns to the heart. And the amount of blood that returns to the heart we refer to as venous return. The amount of blood leaving the heart we refer to as stroke volume. Okay, so what I'm saying is that stroke volume is in fact dependent on venous return. So if we want to maintain the same amount of blood leaving the left ventricle, or indeed increase the amount of blood leaving the left ventricle per contraction, stroke volume, then we need to maintain or increase our venous return. And in order to do that, we have five venous return mechanisms. We have five mechanisms which allow us to actually ensure that we get good venous return, good blood back to the heart in good quantities. And what I mean by that is when we start exercising, of course, what happens quite frequently is we start firing blood towards the lower parts of the body. Let's say the legs, for example, are often running or cycling or we're doing something with our legs. Firing blood downwards from the heart is quite easy because it's kind of gravitationally pulled that way and that kind of works and there's high pressure in uh, arteries and arterioles and so on. But to get it back up from the legs, to return it to the heart, to keep that venous return high, we need certain mechanisms to help us with that. And I want to describe each of those to you here. So the first one I want you to be aware of is something we refer to as the skeletal, skeletal muscle pump. Skeletal muscle pump pump. Now this is I think a really fascinating sort of piece of evolution. What you'll see in these images is that these blue veins, and they are veins not arteries, these blue veins, they are returning to the heart deoxygenated blood. So we have deoxygenated blood that's actually passing up in this direction. Okay, so Gravity is actually holding it back. It's kind of wanting to stop it going up. Let's say that these muscles are, say, the gastrocnemius muscle, for example. The blood kind of doesn't want to go up against gravity. But, of course, what happens is if you are moving and you are exercising, we see on the image on the, on the right here, the muscles, when they concentrically contract, they kind of shorten and fatten. fatten. And, of course, what happens then is the blood is kind of pumped up, squeezed up through the vein by what we call a skeletal muscle pump. And of course, the word skeletal just determines what type of muscle we're talking about. This isn't smooth or cardiac muscle. This is skeletal muscle, the muscle we use for movement. And it's that muscle when squeezing that pumps blood back up to the heart or back to the heart and maintains venous return. You should be able to draw out of that a conclusion about something like cool downs. Can you now see why it's so important to maintain an active cool down? Blood will, will continue to be fired down to the muscles that have worked, let's say the leg muscles in the most general sense. And unless we are moving, we can't actually operate the skeletal muscle pump. The, the, the muscles will kind of just remain in a certain tone, and then the blood will kind of collect there. And we call that pooling, blood pooling. An active cool down, let me actually put in the word active, an active cool down can help prevent blood pooling because we maintain the skeletal muscle pump. So that's mechanism number one. Now then, number two, I'm also going to show you on this image, and it's called the pocket valves, pocket valves, and you can see them on this image. Here they are. As the blood is pumped up and forced upwards, we have these kind of valves here that open and let the blood pass through. But you can see here, when the muscles relax, the valve effectively closes so that the blood can't backflow, it can't drop backwards. So pocket valves prevent backflow. In fact, I want to write that down. Pocket valves, let me put it over here, pocket valves prevent backflow. So in other words, when we've done that hard work with the skeletal muscle pump, we don't lose the blood that's been pumped back up by it falling back downwards. Pocket valves prevent backflow. I'm in trouble writing here. Prevent backflow. And I'm hoping... That makes sense to you. And of course, this is why pocket valves are far more common in veins and venules than they are in arteries and arterioles. Pocket valves tend to occur in veins. Okay, so that's method number two or mechanism number two. What then do we have as 
mechanism number three, which I'll use a fetching lemon yellow for. Well, we call this one smooth muscle. I mentioned this term earlier on. Smooth muscle performs a role, alongside other roles actually, but performs a role because it surrounds here, you see it here, it surrounds the actual valve. So all of this here is smooth muscle. Okay, and what it can do is it can kind of pulse and contract. So just as the skeletal muscle will help pump the blood upwards, this smooth muscle can constrict, we call it, can constrict, let me write that down, can constrict, and it can help to pump blood back up through the pocket valves, back up through the venules and veins, back to the heart and maintain venous return. So our smooth muscle is our third mechanism. Our fourth mechanism, which we'll go for in red, is something called the respiratory pump. The respiratory pump. Now, the word pump, I'm hoping, might give you some indication of what this might mean. And also the term respiratory. Well, respiratory is kind of like the chest cavity, the, th the thoracic cavity, the lungs, all that kind of stuff. Well, that's right. Well, of course, don't forget that this cavity here, this thoracic cavity here, is pumping outwards when we breathe in and it's reflexing back when we breathe out. So it's pumping out and then in, out and then in. And because of that, we get continual pressure changes within that thoracic cavity, which actually squeezes the blood back to the heart itself. So the fact that this chest cavity is going up and down, sort of at rapid pace during exercise actually helps pump the blood through those pressure changes within the actual chest itself. And finally, our fifth mechanism, our mechanism number five, is a very simple and natural one, and it is the mechanism of gravity. So let's say, for example, we have been um, firing blood, fi firing caloric output towards um, the head or towards the arms, for example. Well, they're above the heart, so gravity will actually help return that blood to the heart. Now, this doesn't work if you're firing blood down to your gastrocnemius because you're running, for example. So what do people do? Well, during a rest or during their warm down, they will lie on their back. I'm sure you've seen this. People will lie on their back and they'll have someone kind of shake their legs for them. And of course, the action this achieves is it allows the blood to drop using gravity back towards the heart. So people will do that. I'm sure you've seen that kind of shaking leg thing during warm downs and uh, during periods where uh, someone's re-preparing to go back and compete. So gravity can also help to maintain venous return. But just remember that very first point. Why do we want to maintain or increase venous return? Well, it's because we want to maintain or increase stroke volume, because stroke volume is dependent on venous return. So remember, make sure you undertake warm-ups to get your venous return sort of going and, and, and optimised during activity, and make sure your cool-downs are active so you maintain venous return during an active recovery period, and you can flush the worked muscles with oxygenated blood. Okay, thanks for listening.